Are all Americans mixed? Well, it depends on whom you ask. DNA genealogy tests such as Ancestry DNA, 23andMe, MyHeritage, CRI Genetics, etc. have become extremely popular. These tests provide test takers with a look into their genetic makeup. More specifically, as most people are interested in, these tests are known for providing estimates of your ancestral admixture. They analyze your DNA and compare your DNA data to people currently living in various countries throughout the world. They then estimate your admixture, DNA percentage inherited from each country. As an example, I took an Ancestry DNA test several years ago and their most recent admixture analysis shows me as 75% African and 25% European. My top three African countries are Cameroon, Mali, and Nigeria. My top two European countries are Scotland and Ireland. Every member of my family we have tested thus far shows mixed ancestry from more than one continent. However, is this typical for most American families? On average, the majority of Black Americans have up to 25% European ancestry. This is the case even for Black Americans who have no recent European ancestry. I did a video that showed my family inherited European ancestry prior to the Civil War during slavery. You can check it out at the link above if you're interested. Most people will agree that Black Americans are racially mixed, but just how racially mixed are Americans in general? Before we answer that though, we will have to talk about what is considered mixed. Every country in the world is represented in America. Many Americans descend from multiple ethnicities across the world. It is rare for someone to trace their ancestry back to just one single country. For Black Americans, the admixture even reflects across continents. According to the American Journal of Human Genetics, the average Black American genome is 73.2% African, 24% European, and 0.8% Native American. Latino Americans carry an average of 18% Native American ancestry, 65.1% European ancestry, mostly from the Iberian Peninsula, and 6.2% African ancestry. If you are familiar with American history and migration, the average admixture for Black Americans and Latino Americans should not be surprising. What about white Americans though? Are they as mixed as Black Americans and Latino Americans? There was a study back in 2014 that used 23andMe DNA data results to better understand this dynamic. The 23andMe DNA data revealed that about 3.5% of white Americans carry at least 1% African American ancestry. This is a big difference from nearly all black Americans who carry up to 25% European ancestry. By the way, if you have 1% ancestry, that represents one of your ancestors about six generations back. The different percentages also vary drastically based upon the state. For example, in Louisiana, about 12% of European Americans carry at least 1% African American ancestry and 8% of European Americans carry at least 1% Native American ancestry. Additionally, African Americans in the South typically have higher percentages of African ancestry 
than African Americans in the North and West Coast. Researchers from McGill University found that most of the European DNA among African Americans today probably entered the gene pool long before the Civil War when the vast majority of blacks in the U.S. were slaves in the South. The McGill researchers observed there was ongoing admixture between blacks and whites for at least a century before the Civil War. After slavery ended, the interracial mixing dropped off steeply. This is witnessed even in my own ancestry and family tree. I recently did a video going through my family tree. All of my ancestors going back to slavery were listed as black or mulatto on the census reports. I had no direct white ancestors after the end of slavery. However, every single one of my family lines showed white ancestors prior to the end of slavery. The studies I have mentioned confirm that widespread sexual exploitation of slaves before the Civil War strongly influenced the genetic makeup of the majority of all African Americans alive today. African Americans with lighter skin often had better social opportunities and thus were in a better position to migrate to the northern and western states. This is why black people in the north and on the west coast generally have higher percentages of European ancestry than those in the south. The study using the 23andMe data shows that while African Americans and Latino Americans have pretty diverse ancestry from multiple continents, most European Americans have mixed ancestry only from Europe, meaning they may show admixtures from various countries in Europe, but most likely don't show countries from other continents such as Africa or Asia. It is not uncommon for European Americans to receive DNA results showing they are 100% European. However, the 3 to 4% of European Americans, which represents, by the way, about 6 million people, that do discover they have African or Native American ancestry may be surprised. Some of these individuals may have been told they have Native American ancestry when in fact they have African American ancestry. Some European Americans have been more accepting of rumors about their Native American history, but may be less welcoming of hearing about their African American ancestry. Keep in mind though that some light-skinned Americans with African ancestry who would have been labeled as black during the times of slavery or Jim Crow laws chose instead to pass as white Americans to avoid the oppression that many black Americans experienced during that era. In some situations, their spouses may not even have known of their mixed ancestry. Some families actually took that secret to the grave until these DNA tests became popular and revealed family mysteries. I came across Christine Jacobson's story. She grew up believing she was a white woman and that the white father who raised her was her biological father. She was surprised to learn in 2016, after taking an Ancestry DNA test, that she's actually a quarter black. Here is a clip from Christine. Hi, I'm Christine Jacobson, and I'm here to tell you another story about my DNA testing surprise. So in 2016, I decided, hey, why not take a DNA test? What fun! And when I got my results back from Ancestry.com, the big surprise was that I was 25% West African, which was such a departure from the 100% Danish that I thought I was. Christine has a book out that discusses her story. It's called Dancing Around the Truth, and you can find it on Amazon. By the way, guys, I have decided to start a book club on my channel. I plan to read Christine's book and would love to have you join me. 
I will also have a panel of viewers on the show to discuss the book. So let me know if you want to read together. So going back to the question, are all Americans mixed? The answer is yes and no. Yes, we all descend from multiple countries and many of us have admixtures that show ancestry from multiple countries. We are ethnically and culturally mixed. However, in America, that question often still relates to, are we racially mixed? Generally, when people ask that question, they want to know your percentage of ancestry from Africa, Europe, Asia, etc. When viewing the question from that perspective, studies have shown that African Americans and Latino Americans are quite mixed, and a small percentage of European Americans are racially mixed. Many people will comment and say, well, race is a social construct. I do agree. However, there's still work to be done in society before we get to the point where we can say how someone looks does not matter. One thing we can say for sure is we are all human. You really can't tell whom you are related to based upon phenotype. A few years ago, my husband and I were at a gas station where we were approached by a woman. She approached us and said, hey, are you going to help your brother over there? We were confused as we didn't understand what she was saying at first. She was a random white lady who walked across the gas station lot to approach our vehicle where my husband and I were sitting and having a conversation between us. It was a warm day, so our windows were down. By the way, if you have been following us for a while, the funny thing is this was the same gas station and same parking space where another lady had reached through our car window and rubbed our youngest daughter's red hair. <laughs> I don't know what's up with our experiences at this gas station, but it sure does give us good stories. We answered back to the lady in confusion and said, who? I was literally looking around for Devin's actual brother and was thinking to myself, when did he get here from Florida and why didn't he call us? I was also thinking, how did this woman know my husband's brother? The lady then points to a random black guy whom I guess had been asking various people for money. Now, my husband and I don't mind helping people in need. We have given money to people in situations like that, regardless of race. However, we instantly knew that the woman was suggesting it was our responsibility to help that man and not her because he was black and we are black and she was white. That's a very interesting way of thinking not surprising, but interesting nonetheless. However, if we think about America's mixed ancestry, we could have technically been more related to her than we were to him. I only point that out because who is your quote brother or your quote sister? The Bible says we should love our neighbors as ourselves. Who is your neighbor? Your neighbor is anyone you may encounter in your day-to-day -day life. It goes without saying that your neighbor is not based upon skin color or race. Y'all, it will be so nice when we no longer categorize people by how they appear, but simply accept them as a person that we could potentially positively impact and perhaps someone we could even have a great friendship with. I have faith that we will eventually get there. I have lived in five states, have studied psychology for years, and have been a minister for over a decade. I can tell you that people are just people. We are influenced by our experiences, our backgrounds, our opportunities, and lack thereof. We are all subject to good days and bad days and are trying to live out our lives the best way we can. 
Let's remember that the next time we encounter others. Let's also not forget that our neighbor and brothers and sisters don't have to look like us to be connected to us. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell as well. Thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you again soon.